To make this whole app more useful, we're gonna modify our edit view so it shows nearby places for a given location. After all, if visiting London is actually on your bucket list, you'd probably like to see some suggestions for things to do while you're there. This might sound hard to do, but actually it's fairly easy so we can query Wikipedia using GPS coordinates. And it'll send back a list of places that are nearby. Now, Wikipedia's API sends back JSON in a precise format. So we'll do a little bit of work to define codable structs capable of storing it all. The structure is this. The main result contains a result of our query in a key called query. In the query is a pages dictionary with page IDs as a key and Wikipedia pages as the value. And then each page has lots of information, coordinates, title, terms, and much more. We can represent this storing three linked structs. So first make a new Swift file and call this thing result.swift. Now give it this content. There's a new struct called result that's codable. This will contain the query object. The query struct is also codable. This will contain a pages dictionary, which is an int for the page ID and page as the values. And the page struct is also codable. This will contain the page ID or one word lowercase, which is an int, then a title, which is a string, and then terms, which is a string dictionary with string keys and array of strings as the value. It's a string array inside a string string dictionary like that, all optional. We're gonna use that to store data we fetch from Wikipedia, then show it immediately in our UI. However, we do need something to show while the fetch is actually happening. A text view saying loading or similar ought to do the trick. This means conditionally showing different UI depending on the current load state. And that means making an enum that actually stores a load state, otherwise you don't really know what to show. And so we'll go back to edit view and add a nested enum inside here describing the loading states we care about. So I'll say there's an enum of loading state, which is called case loading, then loaded or failed. Those three cover all possible states to represent the network request. Next, we're gonna add two properties down here that will store information we need. One for the loading state, and one to store an array of Wikipedia pages once the fetch has completed. So we'll say at state, state even, private var loading state is loading state dot loading by default. And then at state private var pages is an array of page. We'll toss away everything else. Just one array of pages at the end of it. Now, before we tackle the network request itself, we have one last easy job to do we already have this form here with a section inside and a new section below that containing our pages, if they've loaded. Now we can put these inside an if or an else or a switch statement whenever you want to, it's down to you. Put them all inside the section though and Swift UI will just figure out the right one to show automatically. So we'll say there's a section here called nearby. Inside there, I'll put a little switch block on the loading state. If we are loading, then we'll just say text of loading, like that. If we have failed, we'll say the text of please try again later. But for the loaded case, let's add a bit of spacing here, it's easy to read, like that. Loaded, that's where we loop over all our pages with the ID of the page ID. Give me one page coming in, and we'll simply say text page title in a font of headline, then plus the text of a colon and a space, and then another plus with text, uh, we'll do page description here in uh, italic, like that. Now notice how I'm using plus here to attach these text views together. It ends up being one big text view, one plus two, plus three with distinct styling inside. The headline here, an italic here, and a plain text inside. It becomes one simple text view using the plus operator. It's really, really nice. 
Uh, this thing here, the page description here, that's just temporary. We'll fix that later on. And now for the part that really brings this all together, we're gonna fetch some data from Wikipedia, decode that into a result object, and assign its pages to our pages property, and set loading state to be loaded. Of course, if the fetch fails, we'll do uh, fail for loading state, and Swifty will just show the appropriate UI for this. Now, advance warning, the URL from Wikipedia is long, and so, rather than try typing in, go to Safari, enter this URL here, bit.ly slash swiftwiki, this one here, and you'll get this page, a little gist I made that fetches the Wikipedia locations. That's the full URL. Just press raw here, that's your URL. Grab that whole thing, boom, to your clipboard. And now add a new method to edit view. We'll say func fetch nearby places, is async, it's networking work of course, and then paste that in. That's our URL string we wanna work with. Uh, now we'll then make it to an actual URL, we'll say uh, guard let URL is a new URL with a string of our URL string. If that fails, we'll print bad URL of URL string, and then return. This matters, even though you've typed out by hand, there is string interpolation happening here, and also here, that might go wrong. So be really careful making URLs from that. If we're still here, which we ought to be, we'll go ahead and start a little do block. We'll go ahead and say, uh, get our data, ignore the response, is try await URL session dot shared dot data from that URL. If we're here, it means we've got some data back, we can work with it. We can make our items, is try json decoder dot decode our result object, the parent object from that data. If we're still here, it means we have actual pages to work with as a result of decoding the items. So we can say that our pages property locally is the items query pages as a dictionary currently, only the values, and then sort those. I'll do $0 title is less than $1 title, like so. If we're still here, we're good to go. Our loading state is dot loaded. It's all worked correctly. Of course, if the fetch fails, or the fetch exceeds, but the decode fails, then we're down to this catch block here. We'll say our loading state is failed, like that. Now this whole load should happen as soon as the view first gets shown on the screen. As so we'll add a task modifier to our view hierarchy. So we have this top level thing here, an app stack here, or even actually inside toolbar, even better, just here. We'll do task is, task even, await fetch nearby places, like that. We well, can see it's working already. I was gonna say, press command R, try it out. It's working already. You can see it's working just fine here. So uh, as you can see, it's, this, is, this is bucking a pass, our example, and it's found places near to there. I'll press Command R to run the app. Let's try uh, somewhere else. Let's have a little zoom in. Uh, let's pan down to here near where I live. I live in the southwest of England. Southwest is southwest, quite frankly, in my opinion. There we go, this is my hometown here in Bath. Yes, it's called Bath. Uh, there we go. I know it's a lovely tourist town one day, come and visit hopefully. I'll go to the middle of town, boom, that's my location. When I press and hold, it'll find places near there. Oh, the railway station, a very exciting place to go and see. Anyway, you can see it's working very nicely no matter where you choose around the world. All we learned from Wikipedia. So, we can now drop pins, we can bring them up for editing, we can change them freely, we also get our listing of information inside there. It's really coming together.